The world is in a digital era and the prevailing technological changes have had a huge impact on all media forms. Television, which is not an exception, is today facing rapid transition towards internet-based services. In Nigeria, part of the move to expand and improve content delivery via the television has been through the migration from analog to digital transmission, which has been foot dragging since 2007. This has been of great concern to stakeholders in Nigeria. And now joining us live on Plus TV African News on the hour is Armstrong Idachaba, Director General, National Broadcasting Commission. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on News on the Hour this afternoon. Thank you uh, very much, Beniak. Good to see you in Lagos after leaving Abuja. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you with us here, sir. Good to see you. Yeah. Now, I, I just wanted to bring um, for you to bring um, Nigerians and viewers up to speed uh, to where we are in regards to the migration from analog to, to digital um, communications and broadcasting as it is since um, the inception of this in 2007. Great. Um, I, I'm glad you, you noted that yeah. um, um, we appear to be on course, but we have had some delay or some hiccup. Um, that's, uh, that's actually stating the, the obvious. Um, uh, fact is, uh, uh, we began the transition in NS in 2015 with a, a pilot in JOS. Yes. And as I speak, um, citizens uh, of, JOS, uh, of JOS City uh, on the plateau uh, are enjoying digital, uh, free uh, digital terrestrial broadcasting. Um, uh, they have, uh, for their viewing pleasure, 25, 26, 27 um, channels, all, all open and, and free, and, and, and quality is very good. Same yes. thing, same experience is going on in Abuja, in, uh, in Kwara, in Oshun, uh, in Inugu, okay. and, uh, and Kaduna. Uh, the, the challenge is, is, is for us to replicate what we have already done in those um, six cities. Okay. And, and I think that um, it's a lot easier now that we have actually had some rollout uh, uh, to, to move forward. Okay. Uh, the major challenge um, all this while has been in the area of uh, the transmission infrastructure. Uh, the signal distributors require money. Uh, they need to, to get transmitters before they are able to establish um, uh, signal footprints in, 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 in states where we desire to go. Okay. Uh, in the area of content, we are glad that um, uh, with, with Nigeria's uh, huge potential for, for creativity, uh, there's, there's, there's more than enough bank of content uh, in the Nigerian creative space. Uh, we are also glad that every day uh, younger and younger Nigerians are becoming highly innovative and creative, uh, giving us uh, the, 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 the optimism Right, that there will be there will be there will be maximum or more and more uh, uh, creative content that uh, will have opportunity uh, to to be transmitted on, on okay. the DTT platform. So in the okay. area of content, yeah, we're ready to go. Yes. Perhaps the other uh, requirement would be with the with with the with the decoder, which you also call the set top box. Okay. Um, now I was I was just going to come to that, Prof. Yeah. Sorry yeah. to cut you in. Yeah. Now I know that there are certain expectations um, of media houses, especially television. Yeah. Now in the process of migrating from analog to to digital. Could, can you shed more light on what is expected of these media outfits, especially emphasis on television? Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think the major shift will be that uh, there is going to be some form of unbundling or, 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 or restructuring of the architecture of broadcasting. Okay. Uh, the way it used to be in the analog era is that each broadcaster needs to set up a studio, needs to set up a transmission house, you erect your mast, you know, you buy antenna, you have uh, a retinue of engineering staff, a retinue of admin and content production staff. Uh, in the digital era, the transmission and the technical structure will now be handled by only two companies, uh, namely Pinnacle Communications Limited and the government uh, created uh, and managed um, ITS, Integrated Television Services. Uh, those, these two companies are required to carry the transmission infrastructure of every broadcast station. So okay. the broadcast stations are essentially going to be like production houses. All you need to do is bother about creating programs, creating wonderful, enticing, enticing content. Okay. Now, while you were speaking, you did make mention that since 2015, there's been some milestone achievement. But, but we know this um, migration from analog to digital has been on since 2007. Can, can you just tell us what could have been, what, what, what's, why is it kind of dragging like, it's kind of dragging like, are there, are there bottlenecks, are there, are there challenges? That, that is causing this simile drag? Yeah, uh, first of all, Benny, uh, it's important to make the point that, yeah. um, you know, uh, a huge project like, like, like the transition from analog to digital broadcasting yes. 
is a is a is a massive and, uh, and challenging project. Yes. Why? Because uh, it is it is it is. Uh, it is encumbered in, in several uh, ramifications. There are there are issues of 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 of, 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 of uh, econo there are economic issues, affordability, okay. you know, and accessibility of some of the requirements like uh, the, the TV boxes, uh, the setup boxes, even the TV itself. Uh, there's there's the issue of um, of, of uh, there are also social issues regarding uh, making. Uh, um, uh, creating access for, for, for people in the lower rung of society because uh, ultimately uh, the idea is to make TV accessible to, to the low class. Okay. So you need, to do, you need to do the matrix, you know, uh, the economic, social, political matrix of how this can be navigated uh, in a way that uh, it meets the needs of every citizen. And, it, and it's huge. Uh, in many countries, uh, dates have not really been the issue. The issue is... Um, that is delivered um, on time and for the good of the people. Even the UK uh, started their own transition and had to reverse the entire thing after they had spent um, uh, okay. millions of pounds. So. All right. now, now, let's come to one of the basic um, um, duties of the commission, which I'm pretty much aware of. I mean, being on radio and now on TV, um, how, would you, how would you assess the compliance level of um, media practices and people keeping to broadcasting codes in Nigeria as it is right now? Mm. In between, uh, <laughs> sometimes you thumbs up for a few. Yes. But what what surprises me most of the time, as an old broadcast regulator, is uh, the tendency for recalcitrance. You know, sometimes you find a broadcast station for an infringement today, and by next week that same breach is, is repeated. Yes. So you begin to wonder whether the the, the the fines are not deterrent, or whether there's lack of internal control uh, by the broadcast stations themselves, or that um, people are not supervising or that people are adamant. Uh, yes. So, uh, but, but largely speaking, um, I think that uh, uh, many broadcasters uh, actually are beginning to see the need, you know, to, 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 to obey the, the provisions of the broadcast code. And many are indeed uh, beginning to assume self-regulatory mechanisms, and, and that is what we will encourage. Okay. Is there any role you say your organization is playing to ensure full compliance to these rules and ethics? Yes, several ways, as you are aware. Aside, aside the sanctions, I'm, I'm pretty much aware of the sanctions. Fine, but apart from sanctions, you also know that we do engagement, we are, we are persuasive. Yes. Uh, Sometimes we call, we caution, and many times we invest our money, uh, do very scarce on training broadcasters. Yes. All of this is for us to build in the consciousness for adherence to standards and, and ethics. Uh, so it's an ongoing uh, discussion. It's an industry that is exploding, that yes. is growing. And um, of course, we know that day in, day out, we, we find some new entrants. Uh, and those ones come uh, possibly with, uh, with new tendencies that also will have to be copped. So I, I think it's an ongoing process. Okay. And, uh, the earlier we, the broadcasters begin to, to recognize that regulation is also for their own good, then, then, then the better. Thank you very much, Professor Armstrong Idachaba, the Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission, for being part of News on the Hour this afternoon. Thank you, Benny Ark. <laughs>